Hey guys, welcome to the Massive Iron Channel. I'm Steve Shaw. In this video, proof, proof that getting bigger helps you get stronger. Before I get into that topic, if you have any questions or comments, drop them down below. The best topic ideas I turn into videos just like this. So I often get questions uh, from folks that'll see a power lifter who doesn't look big. And uh, they'll say, how come some of the strong guys, uh, how come some of the strong guys aren't as big as bodybuilders. I actually had a I had this question during live last week from Stein, legendary Stein, and I responded, and this is before seeing this, I responded that in my experience with natural and unnatural lifters, uh, generally the power lifters have as much muscle as the bodybuilders, right? Obviously they might not have as well-rounded of a physique. I'm not saying power lifters look like bodybuilders, but I was saying the, the power lifters that have muscle are generally the stronger ones. It's generally not, it's extremely rare where you see an outlier that can lift a lot of weight that doesn't have any muscle. So I've been saying this for a long time, right? To get strong, you need to get big. And from what I have seen, the strong guys are big. They're very big. And the big guys are very strong. Not complicated stuff. Well, recently, last week, Menno Henselman, and I, I don't know if it was last week or this weekend, I was on the road, um, posted this. And you can head over to his Instagram to check out more information, but I'm going to cover that in this video. Menno Henselman <clears throat> on Instagram. Powerlifting is supposedly all about strength, not so, uh, about all about strength, not size. Yet, and this is the important part: if we put powerlifters in a body composition scanner, their muscularity rankings are almost identical to their competition rankings. What does this mean? What does this mean? What does this science mean? If you look at the numbers of the ranked powerlifters in any weight class. And then you look at their degree of muscularity, body composition, they rank almost the same. The biggest lifters are the strongest lifters. The biggest lifters are the strongest lifters in almost all cases. Okay? This isn't this isn't a loosely interpreted scientific analysis. This is in almost all cases. You need to understand this, especially if you want to get strong. So I'm going to continue reading a little bit more of this, and then I'm going to give you my uh, some thoughts. And this was from Performance and Anthro uh, Anthropometrics of Classic Powerlifters, Which Characteristics Matter, okay? And you guys can f check this out if you want to freeze and do that, find that study. Uh, performance and Anthropometrics of Classic Powerlifters, Which Characteristics Matter, Ferrari, Luca, Colossia, C-O-L-O-S-I-O, -O Alexandro, et cetera, et cetera, Journal of Strength and Conditioning, April of 2022. Brand new, brand new, April 2022. So I'm going to read you what Menno said. You, he you often hear the dichotomy of strength versus size illustrated by powerlifters versus bodybuilders. Yet in reality... The relationship between muscle mass and powerlifting performance is extremely strong. Not extremely strong in a general sense, extremely strong in a scientific sense. Correlation coefficients are as high as 0 0.95 have been reported between fat-free mass and strength in the powerlifts. And here's a sentence I highlighted because you need to really take this, uh, you really need to uh, understand this as a take-home point. Correlations that strong are exceptionally rare in scientific research. Repeat, correlations that strong are exceptionally rare in scientific research. What does this mean? Bigger power lifters are stronger power lifters in almost every case, and this is extremely strong science. Science this strong with this conclusion, is extremely rare. They, this, they effectively mean we could go to a powerlifting competition, skip the actual competition, 
and just put the power lifters in a body composition scanner and the rankings would be virtually the same. Virtually the same in almost every case. Indeed, a new study on powerlifting performance reports a combination of experience, fat mass, and upper limb and lower limb muscle mass indexes can accurately and precisely, this is scientific, not an opinion, predict overall and individual lift performance, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So does this mean we could actually stop powerlifting competitions? No, blah, 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 blah. And Menno Henselin uh, gives you the conclusion, his conclusions, get bigger sizes, the engine of strength. And number two, Determine exactly which movements you want to be stronger in and practice. So strength is a skill, not a trait. All right. So what are my take-home points? What are what what is the information I've been beating to death, beating the drum to death over and over again for the last twelve years on this channel? Um, if you want to get, you know, I've, I've been against certain types of programs and I've taken a beating. Minimal types of programs. Uh, I've been against. Low rep, low rep, low rep, low rep, right? A couple things that are lost when it comes to strength training is having an off-season period where you're doing, where you're training to build up muscle mass while you're still pushing for progression. Off-season training. So much of strength training, like mentally, we, we think of it as we have to do all these low rep sets and heavy, heavy work and et cetera, et cetera. That can have a place and strength training, but it's after you develop a muscle base, and even then, it behooves you to have an off-season. Stan Efforting, powerlifting, powerlifter Stan Efforting, was on this channel uh, several years back, and we discussed this, the value of off-season training. Stan is big, and Stan is strong. We talked about off-season training, having blocks of training where you're trying to pack on muscle mass while pushing for progression. Of course you're pushing for progression because you have to push for progression to build muscle mass. So you're still building strength, but you're doing so in a more bodybuilding, muscle building type of way. What I call power building. What I've done my whole career, right? What I've done since day one progression using normal bodybuilding types of ranges. So the take-home point for me is if you want to get strong, avoid minimal types of programs with just a few barbell exercises. Get in some good exercise variety. And that, scientifically, uh, has a benefit. We've learned, you know, in the last couple of years that a little bit of exercise variety is good. So get your muscle mass up. Don't just do squats. Don't just do bench. Don't just do deads. Get your dumbbell row strong, your barbell row strong, your leg presses, your hack squats. Get everything strong. The mantra of this channel has always been get everything from head to toe as big and as strong as humanly possible. I've been beating this drum over and over again and it's something that's never going to change. It's a foundation. It's a fundamental. You guys that want to get strong, you need to have, you can have your peaking programs where you, you test your one rep max, or you can start to incorporate some low rep work, but you're going to need some volume. You're going to need some hypertrophy work. If not, you're missing out. You're not going to be as strong as you, you, you could be. And you need to avoid these silly minimalistic types of programs which only do a limited number of barbell exercises and completely dismiss machines or dumbbells or whatever the heck else you want to use. You don't have to use machines if you don't want. I relied on dumbbells and barbells and bodyweight stuff and all kinds of stuff, but I've relied on a more bodybuilding type of exercise variety. I didn't get strong because I had some magic program or some magic philosophy. I got strong doing just this. I didn't get strong trying to get strong. I got strong doing this. And that is the way that I try to pass along to my clients. That is the base and the platform I try to pass along to my clients. And occasionally I'll get somebody that just wants to do low rep work, low rep work, low rep work, limited exercises. And I try to pull them off the cliff because I really know that's not the best way. 
So guys, hope this video has been of some help. If you have any questions or comments, drop them down below. If you made it this far in this video and have yet to subscribe to my channel, please do. I'd appreciate the support. So guys, as always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.